Welcome back. Thus far in the course, you've had a very good introduction to R, followed by a fairly comprehensive coverage of ggplot. And more recently, we have learned about some of the important functions in dplyr, functions like filter, select, arrange, mutate, and so on. In some sense, the course has actually been building up thus far to this important point in the course. So starting now, what we are going to do in the course is really going to build on what we have learned earlier, but it is from this point on that you will be learning to do some seriously powerful things with data. So when you're given a very large data set, say 100,000 rows, 200,000 rows, and you want to you know, slice and dice the data, rearrange the data, organize it into forms that are suitable for you to look at uh, different aspects that you want to explore about the data, it is what we are going to learn now, which is essentially different ways of reorganizing and summarizing the data. It is this that is going to help you perform magic with data. So after studying what we are going to learn from this point on in the course, you will be in a position to take any data set and you know, within a matter of minutes, recast the data set to analyze all kinds of important things. Okay. Now, if you had to do all of that with traditional programming techniques, what you can do in a matter of five minutes could literally take a fortnight to perform with traditional technologies. The R functions that are provided within the dplyr package make all of these things so very easy. All we really have to do is to have a clear conception of what we want from the data. Once we have that conception, recasting the data to suit what we want is really, really easy. Okay, so pay very close attention to the various summarization features that we are going to talk about in uh, today's, in this particular uh, set of lectures. You will find it really, really rewarding and I'm very sure you're going to find all of this very exciting. In fact, what we'll also be doing is to take a look at a data set and think about not only what kind of summary reports we want from this, but also what kinds of visualizations we want to generate from that. And what we'll really do is to set up a smooth workflow using pipes where we take the data and through several stages of piping, bring it into a form that we want and then seamlessly pipe that into ggplot and generate the kind of visualizations uh, that we want. Okay, so we're going to be learning some important, useful, very powerful things from this point on. Okay, after that ambitious introduction, let's jump right into the topic. The first thing we're going to look at is a function called summarize, S-U-M-M-A-R-I-S-E or S-U-M-M-A-R-I-Z-E. You can use either spelling and I'll be using the latter spelling in all the examples that we look at, but you're free to use the other spelling as well. Both of them are equivalent. Okay, so first of all, let's look at some things that we want to do. Okay, so here I'm saying summarize, I'm using the S function, S variant here, but you could, do, you could use Z. Flights, again, we are using the flights table from our NYC flights 13 package. And here I'm saying mean delay equals mean of departure delay na.rm equals true. Okay, so notice what we are doing here. This is not any of the functions like filter or select or mutate that we looked at earlier. Here what we are doing is we are computing a single value called mean delay that is the mean of all the departure delays ignoring the uh, uh, ignoring the missing values. Okay, so this is a summarization function where the result is based on multiple rows. In this particular case, the result is based on all the rows of the table. So if we execute the code, this is what we get. Now what you have to note here is that dplyr functions, all of them return tables. Okay, so for example, if you do a filter, you get back a table. If you do a select, you get back a table. Arrange, mutate, transmute. All of those functions give back tables. And the summarize function too gives back a table. However, in this particular example, all we are doing is computing one single number, mean delay, which is the mean of all the departure delays, right? So the result is actually just a single number, but still all dplyr functions, including summarize, return to us the result in the form of a table. So here we are getting back a table 
with one row and one column. That's what it's saying. A table, one cross one. One row, one column. The one column is named mean delay because that's what we called it here. We said mean delay is mean of this. So that's why the name of the column is mean delay. And it's got only one row. And 12.6 minutes happens to be the summary, uh, happens to be the mean of all the departure delays in the entire data set. Of course, when you use the summarize function, you don't have to calculate only one summary value like I've done here, the mean delay. You could calculate multiples. So in this next slide, I notice I'm using the summarize Z option here. They are the same thing. I'm calculating not only the mean delay, but I'm also calculating here the median delay. So I just added one more. And therefore, you can expect that the result will have two columns. Of course, it's still going to have only one row because the summary is just one value. But the two columns are mean delay and median delay. And of course, the names of the columns came from the fact that I named those summary values as mean delay and median delay. Okay. So right now, what you're seeing is that dplyr, when you use the summarize function, dplyr produces summaries based on the complete data, on the entire data set. Okay. But of course, that's a very uh, weak kind of summarization. Often, we are not interested just in the overall summary, which is easy to find anyway. You didn't need dplyr to do that. You could have used regular uh, summary function from R itself to do this. Right, so the power of dplyr is not required for this, but we have this option called grouping with which we can cover all kinds of uh, nice and powerful summaries. And we'll turn our attention to grouped summaries, which are very interesting, once we complete our discussion of summaries based on the entire table. Okay, now let's take a look at some other important summarizing functions. So we've already looked at mean and median. Uh, so now we'll take a look at some other useful summarizing functions. One very useful summarizing function is this function called n. Okay, of course it's a function, so we uh, suffix it with open parenthesis, close parenthesis. So here I'm saying summarize flights count equals n. So n basically tells you how many rows there are. That's what it tells you. Okay, so n stands for the number of rows in the table that you're considering. Okay, so when I say summarize flights count equals n, you can guess obviously it's going to tell us how many rows are in the entire table and that's exactly what happens. So we get back again a table which is one by one because the summary is just a single number, one row, one column, and the column is called count. And of course the value we get is 336,776 since we already know that that's the number of rows in our uh, flights table. Okay, so of course we will have to use n only within the context of summarize, mutate, and filter. Okay, so n is not an independent freestanding function that works outside of these functions. Okay, uh, of these functions meaning outside of summarize, mutate, filter, etc. Okay, so n works only inside the context of these functions. It's undefined outside and it only counts the number of rows and therefore there is really no need to use na.rm at all, right? Because we're counting the number of rows. We're not counting any individual data values and so on. Okay, so that's what n is used for. So it's a very useful function as you'll be seeing when we go forward with this. There are many other aggregate functions which I'll just mention now and we'll use these functions later on, especially in grouped summaries, right? Most of the time when we are using summary functions, we are not doing the single table summary like we are looking at now. We'll instead be doing grouped summaries and uh, this is just a preliminary discussion for that. Okay, so I can say summarize flights and I can also say first dip is first of departure time. Okay, so the first function can be somewhat misleading. The first function basically says, what is the first value of that column that occurs? First in the sense of the actual top to bottom ordering of the data. Okay, so it's not doing any sorting, finding the minimum time, maximum time. No, none of those things. It's just saying, this is the first occurrence. That's it. Okay, similarly, of course, you've got last Okay, so in that particular column called scheduled arrival time, which is the last value, and 
you can also do nth okay so this is useful so you're saying what is the tenth value not the first not the last but the tenth value okay so that is what nth is nth says given this column tell me the tenth value in that column now here you've got another function called n distinct which is within the particular column in this case the carrier how many distinct values are there okay so how many distinct values so for example in this case I think the carrier column has eight distinct values and n distinct will return the number eight okay it's not going to return to you the actual list the actual uh, unique values it's not going to list the values it's only telling you how many values there are so this is going to return to you a number n distinct is another useful function and then of course you've got max and min the standard functions max and min we and of course mean and median and stuff that we already used okay so you could do this and you'll get a summary consisting of all of these values that we have asked for again it's only one row because this is summarizing the entire table and each of these things first departure last scheduled arrival tenth departure number number carriers max delay each of these is just one single number and therefore your result is going to be just a row single row but of course there are five columns because there are five things we are asking for here okay so the the good thing about these functions that I have described is unlike the n function which can be used only in the context of certain deep layer functions these functions are generic R functions you can use them anywhere okay so you can use them outside of deep layer as well so you got a vector you can say first of that vector or you can say nth in that vector and you'll you'll get back the result okay so these are all freestanding functions that can be used in general now what I'd like to do is to make clear the distinction between n distinct and unique as I've already told you n distinct tells you how many distinct values there are and from our prior discussions we know that unique tells you what are the actual unique values within the uh, within the item being specified for example a vector so here to make this distinction clear take this vector uh, which has got three four five two three six five seven four there are some repeated values so for example you can see three is repeated here five is repeated here so there are some repeated values so if I did unique that it's going to tell me three four five two six seven or two three four five six seven those are the unique values and of course the repetition of three and the repetition of five are not included here okay whereas if I did n distinct that it's going to tell me that there are six distinct values three four five two six seven those are the six distinct values okay so be very clear about the distinction between unique and n distinct unique tells you the actual unique values themselves which are there n distinct simply tells you there are this many unique values within the data set or within the item that you set okay so unique returns a vector n distinct returns a count of the above vector now when you're using aggregates you've got to watch watch out for some mismatches what do I mean by that well take a look at this example so I'm saying summarize flights carriers equals unique carrier max delay is max arrival delay na dot rm equals true now this is a problem the reason being after all remember that summarize or any deep layer function is going to return to you a table right but what do we mean by a table or a data frame we're saying it's got rows and columns and every column has to have the same number of values right so if I have a data frame with 10 rows and three columns obviously each of those three columns has 10 values right so each column has to have the same number of values now since summarize is going to create for us a table and we are saying we want two columns called carriers and maximum delay now both of those should have the same number of values right because they are columns in the same table however when we say carriers is unique carrier we already know that unique is going to give us the actual unique values so this is a vector of size 8 and max delay is just a single number which is in other words a vector of size 1 so there is a mismatch and this will give you an error message right so it's saying error in summarized column carriers must be length 1 or a summary value not 16 
okay so this is not 8 to 16 there are 16 different carriers in this okay so it's telling you that both of these should have the same length but they're not and that's a problem right so be very careful when you're doing aggregate queries with this for this kind of mismatches just be alert to them again just to be sure we got it very clearly so this max of arrival delay so in other words max delay is a column with one value and carriers is a column with 16 values and that is why you see this error message okay so this really completes our discussion of summaries on the whole table on entire tables we will now move on to the interesting topic of creating groups and getting group summaries.